Got to hang around where we brought another one in. Lenny Dawson, right. uh, ex Purdue Boilermaker. We got more Boilermakers uh, around here. Yeah. We'll, we'll get the fight song going here soon. First, we're going to look down on the field at a first and ten from the five yard line. Battle of field position running today, and neither team wants to give it up, do they? I can see that Purdue's having one a heck of a time trying to run with the football, aren't yeah. they, Bob? Yeah. And they're not showing a whole lot of variety of things when they run straight ahead, but uh, they will throw the football. You, to, you told me before the game you never played in this stadium. Never played in this stadium. The last time I was in this stadium, I was a senior in high school at Alliance High School, and Woody Hayes was trying to recruit me, but he had not discovered the forward pass. At that time. <laughs> he had no shot at that point. Yeah. Second down and eight from the seven. Orton in the gun. Play action in his own end zone. Frazier giving chase. He finally throws it. It's too late. He stepped out of bounds at about the seven yard line. You guys were reminiscent about Super Bowls and yes. another old Boilermaker went in the Hall of Fame this year. A lot of people don't know Hank Stram was a guy that was here. And That's I know you were there for that uh, festivity. Yes. Uh, my good wishes go out to Hank. He's not doing real well yeah. right now. He's got some health problems, but uh, that was quite a weekend for that, him. That was long overdue, him going to the Hall of Fame. I thought so, yeah. but uh, no one asked for my vote. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, girl. You're going down, uh, Lenny, to do the uh, Chiefs and uh, the. You know that you know the Chiefs are undefeated so far. <laughs> I knew it was going to come up. Huh? <laughs> Lenny's doing the radio call of the game on uh, tomorrow against Cincinnati, and of course undefeated at 8-0, starting the second half of the season. Third down at seven. Orton's in trouble. Lost it all. Ohio State's got it. Touchdown. He's the guy that's getting all the credit, but it was that pocket that got collapsed by the defensive line that forced the turnover. And now it's Nugent for the point after. And it's up and good. 11-23 to go in the ball game. The first big play. It's no surprise it came from a defense. And how fitting. Let the defense score because they've been doing it all day long. When you're backed up, you got to protect the football. Smith and Anderson, the two guys that collide and force the fumble. And Mike didn't have to go far. And Bob and Brad right here. Right here. Watch Smith as he gets in around Butler. You see the great pressure by the defense for the fire Kudla. I take this football, put it over the bench, and then walk right over to the punter who nailed the punt inside the five yard line and Good say, point. Thank you for the field position. Yep, you're right. Now both Anderson and Smith putting pressure. That's dangerous. You're right, Swanee. The punter set him up. What do you think the chances of him doing that, though, giving the ball to the punter? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's going to keep that one for a while. I would blame him. So all of a sudden, there is the putter that's done a nice job today with three inside the five. There's the guy that got the touchdown, and now 105,000 are into it. What's the way Ohio State has been winning close games for the last couple of years? They hang on, they hang on, they don't make any mistakes. The worst thing you do offensively is punt the football, let your defense go out, and your special teams or your defense win it for you. So Purdue will get it back. They could use a good kick return to get things kick started. 11-23, all that's left, and now there is a touchdown difference on the scoreboard. First score we've had since late in the second quarter. That shows you the importance of that first down play. Oh, it for gets sure. the positive yards. Yeah, for sure. A high short kick. And fair catch taken at about the 18-yard line. What was that? I don't know. He had some room to work, but he didn't want to deal with it, I guess. Get out of the way and let the return guy catch it. Lenny, greatest memory for you playing for Purdue. I bet I know what Bob's is. I tell you, when I, when I was a sophomore, we went to South Bend to play Notre Dame, and we beat them. It was the only game that they lost all year long, broke a 15 or 
14-game winning streak and uh, go back to Purdue and had a parade and everything else. <laughs> what's, what's going on here? Reese, did they throw you a pretty good parade after the Rose Bowl? Or? Yeah, we yeah. went in uh, 67, the only time, the, well, the first time Purdue had gone to the Rose Bowl, and we had a nice parade when we get back. Down at the 20-yard line, there's the current Purdue quarterback. I've got a couple of the yesteryear ones with me. This guy would like to go to a big bowl game. Now he's got a seven-point deficit, deficit staring him in the face as he works from his own 20. Orton scanning the field, comes back, and has his man complete. It's going to be a first down or very close to it. Anthony Chambers stepped out right at the marker. I think they'll give it to him. So they've got the receivers, and you know Kyle Orton's not going to quit slinging it. You just wonder, I guess his psyche's already back. you got to forget about the fumble. Oh, yeah, I mean, you, you know, the thing you have to do is protect the ball when you're back there, but now the thing you'd have to do is say, I can do something about that. Yeah. We're on the field, the offense, I'm in control of this offense. We can go down and tie it up. Again, we're working the gun with four wideouts. Now he's going to run with it. Heads to the sideline, gets what he can, which is about five yards, and then he's run out of bounds over there by Tyler Everett. So, Lenny, I know you're doing the uh, Kansas City game tomorrow night, the Chiefs game down in Cincinnati. Yes. And uh, Dick Vermeil is one of my dear friends. Yes. <laughs> Carl Peterson, the uh, the uh, president, general yeah, manager. They all love you. It's all good, coming to a head here. What do you want to say? He's a good guy. I, 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 Lamar Hunt's one of my dear friends. Yes, he is. But, <laughs> but uh, I'd like to see you lose one game, and then you can go on and win as many as you like. I understand that. Huh? I understand that. The rest of your Miami teammates, I understand that, too. Uh -huh. The much talked about champagne toast that the Dolphins have been able to keep toasting to each other since 72. Here's a throw and a quick toss and a first down again. That's Stanford. He and Dustin Fox all day long. 82 and 37 have been having at it. This time, John wins the battle momentarily. And they move the sticks again. Bob, I'd like to see Purdue speed it up a little bit. They're down by seven. Well, uh, I'm speaking as an alum. You're not here as impartial here, but I'd like to see him in and out of that huddle and change the pace of this game a little bit. Well, you mentioned a little earlier, too, when you came in about quick counts. Yes. I, I don't think quarterbacks in general, uh, and both quarterbacks in this game, go enough on quick counts. No, because you let the defense jump in and out and try to, try to fool you. Here's Orton in trouble in the pocket again. Again, he finds some space on the left side, and he's run out as Smith gets out. He got about a three-yard game. Will Smith can go sideline to sideline, can he? And, yes, he can. Lenny and I are both up here looking downfield. There's nobody open uh, to throw the ball to. They've got to get away. They've got to get some separation yes. from the defensive backs. And they're sitting there watching their quarterback while he's scrambling. They should be moving. Yeah. Yeah. You know, go the other way and get out of it and do something. Just get just separation from the defensive back. Second down and seven. You see Gamble trotting over. To the top to get the slot man. So Fox and Gamble both on the top of your screen defensively. And Orton's going to hand it off to Boyd inside on a draw play. And he almost busted it. Nice job, though, by Tyler Everett to stay in his lane and make the tackle. E Everett's a defensive back. If he breaks this tackle, he runs for a while. Everett's right here. Go ahead and run it. Smith, 93. Look at the hole. Look at the hole. If he gets away from this guy, he runs for a long time because there's nobody in the middle of the field. If he would have cut back, he'd have had a huge one, too. But Everett makes the stop and forces a third and two. Big third down for the Boilermakers, and they throw for it, and Stanford and Fox out there, and he can't handle that one. So they're going to have to give it up. It's been a battle all day. Stanford against Fox on the short side of the field. Fox has won more than he's lost. Jams him. You can jam him. Now, when he gets past you, you got to get your hands off of him. It looked like it was supposed to be a slant. And now the punt upcoming. Another punt with 10 minutes to go in the ball game. And a high kick. Going to head down, and they won't be able to get to it. It goes in the end zone. Touchback. Don't settle for a slow computer. It's is Bob, 6.48 left. And again, terrible field position. A great job by the uh, Ohio State punt team. you got to go a long way against a, a darn good offense, defense, I mean. And Orton finally trying to go long, and Chris Gamble's there stride for stride with Stanford. He never got any separation at all against number seven. One of the few passes they've thrown down the field today. Yeah. 
sometimes guys scheduling helps a team. Let me tell you why I say that. Last week Ohio State we were here for the ball game. Who do they play? Yeah. Michigan State spread offense five receivers all over the field. They get a whole game situation to get ready for another team like this and the defensive secondary has been phenomenal. They sure have. Second and ten. Again a lot of noise that Orton's trying to ignore. Here comes Reynolds on the blitz. Incomplete. Boyd was a safety valve and he was covered too. Nice job by Mark Antonio dropping off playing zone then blitzing with the, the linebackers Reynolds that time from the outside then mixing it up jamming the wide receivers with tight coverage just a nice rotation third down lack of conversion is what you could call Purdue today I guess two for 13 and none bigger than this one third and ten they may never get their hands back on the ball if they don't convert this one. Nice throw. Complete out to Chambers. Boy, that was big. Got 11 on third and 10. Well, you figure with six minutes and 33 seconds left, you're not going to get many more possessions. That time he had the time to throw. Three-man line. He gets plenty of time to throw. Zone eight guys dropping off. First down. Stepped up in the pocket with that Will Smith rush coming and drilled it out to the 20. First and 10 Purdue. As we wind down near six minutes. Orton in trouble. This time he got rid of it to Void and Void's in the open field. Void across the 45. All the way out to the 48 yard line. Campbell makes a saving tackle. We talked about these defensive backs being able to tackle in space. They all can do it. There are several plays that Purdue's had that if they could break one tackle, they could get it done. First, Kyle Orton had to survive the rush, and he did. Right there, it didn't look good. There you go. He gets it in the middle of the field. Now, right here. If he breaks that tackle, he's got all the way down the sideline to go. Longest play of the day for Purdue, 28 yards on what looked like a broken play almost. Yeah, short throw, long run. Yard after catch by the tailback from the 48 now. Horton goes back to work, throws, and completes it to the 48-yard line, out to Stubblefield. And Fox, boy, Fox was laying back. That was awfully close. Horton knew he had to really rifle that. That could have been picked off, and that would have been a touchdown going the other way. It's a look from behind the defense. Watch how close Fox closes. Uh, he knew. Oh, boy. Oh. He, he knew he had to gun it because he threw it to the sideline late. And then you really have to throw it. Second and five. They're in Ohio State territory. And by tight coverage. Orton, now he's got some open field. He could run with it, and that's what he will choose to do, and he broke a tackle, and he's down to the 30. Orton's biggest plays have come when he has scrambled, and that is not, not normal for him, and that's what's working against Ohio State defensively. So another first down. Big play by Orton here. He got a spy right here. That guy right there is spying. He's looking for the scramble. That's Kudla, 57, and Orton outruns him. Orton's had some huge runs today. 47 yards on the ground for him. First down, just inside the Ohio State 30. Orton again on the move. And is that caught? What a catch that was. Did he catch that? By Ingram. Oh, man, did he ever catch that ball? Well, that's the stork. He had to stretch all 6'9 out to get that one. Yes. Boy, and stretch all of his fingers out <laughs> at every joint. Unbelievable. He stretches out, gets his hands on the ball, and you see clearly he makes a catch with full control as his body's laid out, and the hand is between him and the ground right there. Oh, that's, that's good. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, he's a true freshman, too, as Brad said, 6'9". He's caught, uh, what, 11 balls coming in today. This is maybe Purdue's last best chance to tie this game. At the Ohio State 11-yard line. It's Ohio State, but Purdue, a first down at the Buckeyes 11. 
Orton. Pump fake, Statue of Liberty coming around by Boyd. Boyd inside the five, touchdown. Great call by Jim Chaney. We're an extra point away from a tie game. 11 yard touchdown by Void. And boys, that silenced the crowd, except those guys. 436 remaining. And now an all important extra point coming up. And remember, the field's a little slippery, and Ben Jones missed his last field goal. We still couldn't determine whether or not anybody got a hand on it. We think he just kind of missed it to the left. He's got this one, and we're tied at 13. So we were 6-6 at halftime, a scoreless third quarter. Now we've got a touchdown each way. Finally, an offensive touchdown, Bob. Yeah, go ahead and watch, watch the middle linebacker when the fake is made. Pump fake right there. You see how it got Reynolds stepping all this way? Now watch as he hands it to the back. Now look at the hole right here. He got a huge hole right in here with a blocker that doesn't have anybody to hit before he gets into the end zone. That's just good. That's 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 knowing your offense and it's having the plays called. Almost didn't get the handoff, but you got to hand it to the offensive coordinator, Jim Cheney, in the press box for knowing the right play to call at the right time. That's organization. They went 92 yards in eight plays and got that touchdown. Jim Cheney, the guy that made the call, what would you think his reaction would be? Well, he's he's standing. He's usually sitting, oh, so yeah. he's into the game. Oh yeah. There's the guy that kept the drive alive with a sensational catch down the middle. It was an outstanding catch. Line drive kick, and it's going to go in the end zone. Really, that's the first thing Purdue has done in the second half. Well, how big is that missed field goal of theirs? Yes. They'd have the lead right now if that was a field goal that would have been good. Our Pacific Life game summary. Orton's thrown it 41 times, still no touchdowns. Greg Krenzel, efficient, 192, but no touchdowns. Both defenses have played their hearts out today. And we've had 16 punts. The one turnover is key, obviously, and Purdue putting it on the ground at the one-yard line. That scooped up by Ohio State for a touchdown. Now they need an offensive score, and they've got 436 to work with. Krenzel getting pressure, and he gets sacked and there's a penalty marker way back in the secondary about 30 yards away from the play that's probably defensive holding the flag is on the far hash mark way out at the 30 yard line and it is what Bob called it's going to be on hard sock right there it's just a takedown that's uh, Wichiku, the linebacker, who's in there for Gardner. Defense, 10 yards from the previous spot, first down. So that's, he had the coverage on on the, the tight end, and rather than let him run free, he just uh, grabbed him and pulled him down. Keep in mind, Bob mentioned it earlier, and all Ohio State fans know it well, if not people all over the country. This is a team, Ohio State, that knows how to win close games. Some people call it luck. Well, they create their own luck, I think. But they know being in tight ones. And that is what they do well. 11 of the last 12 decided by seven or less, they have won. So they win the close ones. Here's a long ball near sideline. Oh, what a catch by Santonio Holmes. How in the world did he make that one? Well, the ball is thrown where it needs to be thrown. Did he get did he get one foot down? Let's take a look. Now this is a great throw by Krenzel. He just throws it to the outside. There's plenty of room. Whew. Wow. It's close. Take uh, a look. He's got yeah, it. He's got it. He's got it. Great Good. catch. Boy, we see the two thing, just. The thing Holmes did is he gave the quarterback plenty of room to throw the ball to the outside. We've seen two great catches in this quarter Here in the last couple minutes. Everybody coming. Krenzel throws it. Tips. Incomplete. Kevin Nesfield, the defensive end, is the guy that got a hand on it. As he actually dropped back from his defensive end spot in a little more of a coverage area in a zone blitz. Everybody was coming. He wasn't. He got a hand on it. Ohio State has not done anything in the second half. They've had the ball four times, and they've punted it all four times. 
Always got a track number 12. Michael Jenkins has had a 100 yard plus day. It's an empty backfield. Prenzel sometimes runs out of this formation, and now the officials have loaned the ball dead as so Purdue is taking a timeout. Well, they had three wide receivers up to the top of the field of the screen, and uh, only two guys out there covering them. So Purdue takes the timeout to get their defense situated. We asked you our singular wireless poll question earlier, which team has been the biggest disappointment this year and uh, the 38,000 plus that have uh, already logged on. Notre Dame at 42%, even though they won today over BYU, we understand. But still, that was uh, what you folks got in on. We'll have another question for you next week. Yeah, that uh... did Auburn lose to Georgia. Georgia was ahead. The last time I checked it was 13 to nothing. That game's probably still going on. And a kicker who would like a chance. You know that. And he's got the leg. We know that. He hit a 52 yarder earlier. Just got an update from the guys in the truck. Georgia 26 to nothing over Auburn. So the Bulldog offense must have come to life. The red line is where Mike would like the line of scrimmage yeah. to be to give himself a chance for his longest field goal ever. So that's what? That's 36. Add on. That's 50. That's 53. 53 and he's hit goal. from 52 today. So that's past history and current history. Here comes the blitz again. Krenzel's hit. The ball falls incomplete. Nico Kudavides putting the heat on the quarterback. Yeah, you, you got to be careful offensively because the last two plays, this this desperate defense has blitzed right up the center. And if you knock the ball up in the air like he's doing here, the defense has a better opportunity to catch it than the offense because they see what's happening. They're facing the ball. The receivers are running away from it. Third down again. Craig Krenzel today, four of nine in this situation. We're under four minutes. And again, the officials blow the whistle. As Purdue had to take another timeout. And they have. Again, disorganized apparently on defense. They're upset with something over there. Down here to try to keep in this game. And Jenkins in and out of his hands. Could've he was scored. whirling around. He might have taken it all the way had he, he been able to hold on. That's a huge play in this game. Because they were blitzing, he had single coverage, he got the ball outside, just gonna run a slant. The corner's on the inside technique. Oh, you gotta catch that ball. He was thinking where he was going and the move he was gonna put on Reeves, but he forgot one very important thing. Take the ball with you. Remember now, six punts have been down inside the 20 by Sandy today. And he hangs another high one that's gonna be inside the 10, fair caught at the eight. And a penalty marker down. Purdue might have had too many guys on the field. Fourth and ten was the situation. Illegal substitution. Defense. The penalty is declined. First down. 38. That would have been a 55-yard field yep, goal. Yep. So they'll let He's their good. defense go to work instead. Right. And either shake the ball loose. I mean, it's, this is like, you know, in a way, this is like overtime because the ball... It's not, not in college, but you, you've got the offense. Forget about the offense. You've got the football down in the Ohio State end of the field. Right. If you can shake it loose, the game is over. They shook it loose once, or they wouldn't have a touchdown yet, Ohio well, State. We showed what Ohio State's done in close games. Purdue, I'm afraid to say, on the other hand, has not been good in that area. Seven of the last eight losses. All they need is a field goal to win for the first time in Columbus in 15 years. But they got a long ways to go to get Ben Jones a crack at it. They just had a great drive against this defense. Can they do it again? Orton fires far side and incomplete. Tried to get it out to Ray Williams. Dustin Fox was right there. So Oklahoma rolls again today as you see some of the scores from other games, 41-3. And here, third-ranked Ohio State trying to stay in the national championship picture. Tied at 13-13 with Purdue. 
Orton again fighting the noise in that end zone. You got the tight coverage on both sides. Switches Void over to his left now in the gun. And he'll give it to Void. And Void broke a couple tackles. He's got a first down. Huge draw play by Void, and he's had two big runs in this quarter. One on the Statue of Liberty for the touchdown, and there they pick up a first down. Good call. It's, there, there, there aren't many easy things. Cheney told me before the game, we got to get some running plays going. At least some runs. we got to keep it alive a little bit. Here's the running back right here. It's going to be the draw. Does a nice job. The offensive line does a good job of staying with their men downfield. He really stayed with his blockers well to pick it up out at the 21. Here he is again, and he goes down at the line of scrimmage this time. Darian Scott makes the stop along with A.J. Hawk. I always hated playing against top defenses because there was nothing there. You yep. couldn't rely on anything. I mean, you just call plays and hope. So we're under three minutes now. The numbers for Boyd, Boyd today, and we've got a down Boilermaker. It's their center, and they need him. Hardwick, the captain. And Purdue, two minutes and 59 seconds to work. They are out of timeouts. So here comes the backup center. This is not good. Well, especially not when you're going to work out of the shotgun so often. Yeah, Pilaposkis is the backup center. He's a fifth-year senior. Hardwick was injured and had walked off the field. But you're backed up. This Pilaposkis has been sitting on the sideline the whole ball game, and now you come in and say, make this snap. With Tim Anderson right in your mush. Right. Yeah, that's easy, huh? Snaps clean. Orton. Now running again, and he'll be brought down at the 25. He's got to put that ball away. That's one thing that the defense is trying to do is slap it loose. Will Smith made the tackle. Clock working its way under two and a half. Purdue out of timeouts. Ohio State has three remaining, and they might want to stop the clock somewhere along the line here to give themselves a little extra time. Well, but they first, also, they want to stop this third down. Exactly. This is a makeable third down. They don't want to help Purdue down the field either. Here's the third down of the ball game right now. Third and six. Horton looking left the whole way and goes complete that way. First down. Out to Anthony Chambers, who just dives himself out of bounds about two lengths of the football in front of the first down line. Good protection. Orton, Orton waits and, and makes a big completion. The inside receiver just going to go down and break to the outside. Pushing off, pushing off, breaks outside. Not open very much at all, but it's a short throw. Purdue doesn't have a tight end that they throw to, so you got to do that with the, the slot receivers. Little inside, little outside stuff. First and 10, Purdue. Down to 143. Drop the ball, it's loose! And who's got it? If Ohio State's got it, this one's over. They're still unpiling bodies. All the officials in on the act, trying to push the players back to find out who's on the bottom of the pile. Buckeyes ball. They win the close ones, don't they? It was a center quarterback exchange. Hardwick, the center for Purdue, had gone out two, two times before, two plays earlier. It looks like the snap was good. A little bit low, but it was right in his hands. He should have caught it. Maybe not the way it came back from the other center, Hardwick. But it was right there. But it was there to catch. Remember, Purdue can't stop the clock. They're out of timeouts. Craig Krenzel has never lost in the horseshoe. It doesn't look like he's going to now either. They don't need a lot. They'll give it to Lionel Ross. The clock will work its way down near a minute now. The timeouts that Purdue took when they were confused defensively is going to come back to haunt them. There's no doubt about that. But I don't think Purdue's going to have any time. 
to come back. I mean, their, their opportunity to score is passed. It's just a matter of stopping Ohio State. And it's a matter of number 85's right leg. He's hit two today. He'll be the guy that they'll send out there to try to win it. They want it right in the middle of the field. They're already in his range. It'll be Lydell Ross. Now he's going to cover that football up. Got to the 25. This would make it a 42-yard kick if they decide to let the rest of this time run down. <laughs> I don't know why people are booing. They They've got think, an opportunity to win. They think they know more about this than Trestle does. Yeah. Uh, Brad, they're not booing. They're going new. Oh, that's right. New. It's the it's the Nugent. That's the Nugent. Yeah, new. thanks, Juana. You're right. I heard that earlier. I should have remembered. <laughs> well, he could be the hero of Columbus if called on and if he can make it. And right now, they're going to put it right in the middle of the field, and they're not going to mess around with anything. It's going to be Krenzel. Okay. No. Down at the 24. It'll be a 41-yard field goal attempt, and now the Nugents come out again. Down to the final seconds. Craig Krenzel's not going to let that referee get away without calling that timeout. There it is with four seconds left. Four seconds left in regulation at the Horseshoe in Columbus. Ohio State has sent out Mike Nugent, who's already hit two field goals today, including one from 52 yards. The Snapple Cup from Kyle Andrews, the hold by B.J. Sander, and the fortunes of Ohio State's season rest on the right leg of Mike Nugent. Will the dream for Ohio State continue? Will they have a chance to possibly defend their national championship? Comes down to this kick from 41. And it's blocked! Purdue blocked it! Sean Phillips scoops it up and returns it to the 30-yard line. We'll go to overtime. Unbelievable. Whatever they need him to do, he does. So it's overtime at Ohio State. Kyle Orton will get another chance. Today, the electronics industry is... Boy, a long day at the office and still the handshakes and the smiles, and now we've got Hi, some extra football. You guys get the call again? Yeah. What do you want? Yeah. Tail. We're, we're using my coin this time uh, with a regular head and a tail. Okay? He's killing me now. Okay. Uh, head or tail? Tail. He wants tails? It is a tail. We want to start on defense. You want to be defense? Yeah. What do you guys want to do with Tundra and Play? You want to play at that end? Please place that dress. All right, fellas. Yeah. So Ohio State will have it offensively first, as you heard. Kudavides. Called tails, got it, says we want to play defense, then we know what we're up against. Again, a look at the blocked field goal, Bob. Watch well, Wichiku right here. He's the guy that's going to come forward and, and jump as high as he can. Now watch what happens when the offensive linemen hit him. They push him up right here. Look at this. They hang him. They help him hang in the air. Well, Wichiku blocks it, but he got a little help from the offense. That not was a, the low snap. Not the best of snaps. Sander got it down, though. And Orton's reaction, knowing he'll get another chance. And on the other side, a game that could have ended in regulation. Coach Tressel knows that that one got away. The game still hasn't completely. Both teams get to touch it in overtime. We'll give you the overtime rules after this snap. Prenzo back to throw. And he's going to be sacked on the first play of overtime. Starting at the opponent's 25-yard line, of course, as you take a look at the overtime, there isn't sudden death. Both teams get a chance at it. You start on the 25, you go until the ties are broken, and starting that third overtime, you have to go for two-point conversions. That doesn't mean that uh, it can't end up being seven or eight overtimes. You can ask the likes of Arkansas and some of those teams that have done it already this year. You know, Krenzel has done this before. The one that comes to mind is last year, the championship game yep. against Miami went, what, two overtimes? Yep. So now backed up to the 29, though. Purdue showing blitz. Frenzo right will run with it. He's not going to get much. He might not even get back to the original line of scrimmage. He won't. So it's going to be a third down in about 11 or 12. They need to get down to the 15-yard line for a first down. Definitely need to get some points on the board. You, you need to get at least three. But you, you, you don't want to turn over. This is a tough situation here. Third and 11. Yeah, do you gamble a little bit or not? 
They're perfect in overtime, including North Carolina State in three OTs earlier this season. Yep. They've been here before. You got single coverage out here. Frenzel threw a touchdown in all three of those overtimes against NC State. Single coverage. Third and 11. Got his man, but Jenkins all wrapped up by Reeves. Won't get to the first down marker. So putting, now we'll see Mike Nugent again. Yeah, that's putting a lot of confidence in that corner out there to tackle. Because he's missed some today, but here, here comes Nugent. Well, he's got another chance at redemption here, but this could only give him the lead, not the win automatically. 41-yarder blocked moments ago by Wichiku. And you can bet those linemen aren't going to hold those guys up there that long anymore. <laughs> Hit him and knock him down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This will be a 36-yard attempt. Let's see if the snap to Sanders is a little bit better. From the right hash. 36-yarder, and this one's good. So Ohio State takes the lead in overtime, but it is far from over. 16-13 Buckeyes, and Purdue will take the field now. Game on, pressure on Purdue offense. Remember, Purdue's got an excellent kicker as well, so you just you just wonder with Jim Chaney and the way he thinks <laughs> if Purdue doesn't try something right off the bat here to try to end the ball game. There's Jim looking on. His offense has turned it over twice today. They only turned it over 14, 10 times all year. Two and two in overtime all time for Purdue. The last one a year ago, Illinois. They start from the 25, and Orton will be under center. They'll keep it on the ground. And Boyd's hit by Reynolds for a loss of a couple. So both teams lose yardage on their opening snap of overtime. That puts you in a, you don't want to be in a long yardage situation in this particular case, that's for sure. So second down and 12. Back at the 27 yard line. Purdue down three in OT here in Columbus where they haven't won since 1988. That's allowed into the stadium also. Orton back to throw. Scrambles around, pressured in the pocket, broke one tackle, and he won't get away from that one. Yeah, he better start putting that ball away, too. He's already dropped it twice today. When he starts scrambling, you got to put it away. Darian Scott applied the pressure on the inside. There's Jones. He's warming up his right leg. Will Allen, a nice open field, sure tackle, and we've got an injured Buckeye that's going to stop play momentarily here. And I think it is Darian Scott who's... He's had an ankle problem this year. Looks like it might be that ankle yep, again. You're right. He was just a demon last week when we saw them here in the Michigan State game. He was all over the field. He's been applying a lot of pressure to Orton collapsing that pocket today, so they lose him. Pitcock will go in to take his spot on the defensive front. Right now, all the pressure is on Orton on a third and 12. Or to be a 43 yard field goal if they don't gain any yards. Orton comes up under center. Appears to be changing the play. We've got all these people up here. Nobody in the deep center field. Here's the throw and it's complete. Gamble can't hold Stubblefield from getting the first down. Great effort by Stubblefield. Gamble holding on for dear life and on third and 12 they pick up 13 yards. He was all by himself. And boy, you can hear a pin drop in here right now. He had time to wait. Stubblefield got inside of Gamble, made the good catch, and then fought for a first down. Good presence. You think it's not a game of inches? He got the field first down by inches, and Simon Frazier just barely missed blocking that pass from his defensive end spot. Ohio State is one touchdown pass away from losing this game. And there's movement on the right side. It's Charlie Davis, a tight end who fell out of his stance. So again, every time it looks like Purdue helps himself, they make it tougher on themselves. A false start will make it first and 15, and it backs it up to about the 19-yard line. Joe Tiller, knowing that his Boilermakers have had opportunities. Remember, Ohio State got their touchdown by their defense. The only offensive touchdown we've had is when that 11-yard run by Boyd. First down and 15 in overtime. 
Play action for Orton. Going to the corner, and Gamble dropped an interception. Chris Gamble dropped one that could have ended things. Oh, man. We welcome those of you that are joining us, having watched the Washington State-Arizona State game. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our crew in overtime in Columbus. Watch the receiver. He's going to go down, break to the inside, and then go back outside. But he falls down. He's going to fall down. Orton's going to throw it. Before he fell, the game could have been over. If Gamble, Gamble, the, the, the two-way player from last year, dropped the touchdown pass last week, could have ended it here today. Still life in Purdue, though. They get another chance. Second and 15. Orton in trouble. Here comes the pressure from Smith. He throws, and that one is caught or traps. Incomplete. It'll be third down. Ray Williams diving for that ball and just couldn't get his hands under it enough. So third down and 15. Remember, they converted a third and 12 in this overtime already. The pressure came from Will Smith holding on to Orton's leg as he let go of that. And slid through and hit the ground, yep. and then he covered it. Had so his hands call. under it, but it yep. slid through his hands and got on the ground. At the 19-yard line in overtime. Big Ten title on the line, maybe Rose Bowl on the line, maybe more than that on the line. Orton in trouble again, flush from the pocket, trying to find a receiver, and he's got to throw it away. We have nothing. Nope. So now he'll put it down, Kyle Smith to hold. A 37-yard field goal attempt by Ben Jones. And now Ohio State's going to take a timeout. Brad, Ben Jones, kind of a remarkable story. When he was in high school, he, was a, he had gained a tremendous amount of weight. He got up to about 280 pounds. And he had an uncle who passed away from a heart attack due to uh, him being a bit overweight when he was about 50 or 51 years old. And he decided, you know, I got to lose some weight or else I might be like my uncle when I turn 30. So he began a program watching what he ate, eating light, lots of water so he'd feel full, dropped the weight, started to kick, get better. Now he's here doing extraordinarily well. A remarkable story about self-discipline to be healthier and stronger. Yeah, he didn't start off here, though. He started off at Butler. Yeah. As a transfer, transfer. walked on to Purdue and uh, has done big things ever since he got to Purdue. Well, he's being asked to do a big thing here to keep this game alive for another overtime. 37-yard field goal attempt out of a Kyle Smith hold. Trying to make it 16-16. Snaps a little wide. The kick is wide left. Ohio State wins it in overtime. They survive another one. The Buckeyes dream is still alive. The hopes for an upset for the first time in 15 years here in Columbus have just faded to black for the Boilermakers. What a game. It's unfair. I know what you're going to say, that anybody has to lose this one. It's unfair that anybody has to lose, and it comes down to a field goal kicker. Let's check in with Lynn. Thank you, Bob and Brad. Coach, you won. <laughs> You've won your share of tight ones, but this one, all special teams, great defense, a lot of heart and guts. Yeah, it really was. You know, if you look at the scoreboard there at 16 to 13, four yards difference in total offense. Special teams were extraordinary, kicking them down in. Uh, Mike made the long 52-yarder, which was huge. You know, we got great kids, they got great coaches, they work at it, and they never give up. And how about our crowd? Well, the fans were great. You know, you play a lot of football games, they talk about the three phases of football, offense, defense, and special teams. It seemed today that both offense and defense set up all your special teams, but your punter might have been the key to the whole ball game. Well, B.J. Sanders has been the key all year long. The way he's been dropping them in the corner and putting people in tough situation. And, you know, we win as a team, and all those guys are special. Well, great job. Terrific game here, and you made your, you made your own luck, Coach. Well, thanks, Lynn. For